Hi guys, just me, Celebrant Lindsay, and I'm here at Falkirk Crematorium. I'm just about to, well, half an hour, I'm going to deliver a service. But I thought I'd make a wee video. We used to be able to go in and have a cup of tea at Falkirk Crematorium in the, the staff kitchen, but they've, they've stopped that now, so we have to sit in the vestry, which is boring. So I thought I would just make a wee video, and um, I thought today I would just talk about the process of what happens um, when when you're asked to do a funeral because that's a question I'm often asked you know so how does it work so I thought today I'll talk about how it works so the majority of funerals that I'm asked to do come via a funeral director or, or a number of funeral directors I work with a number but most of them come via funeral directors occasionally you will get a family coming to you direct but usually it's funeral director. But regardless of how it happens, um, there's some sort of initial phone call, let's say from a funeral director, and he, she will say something like, we have, we've had a family in, they're looking for a celebrant, we think you would be a good fit, could you help us? And you will they'll then either tell you the date and the time that they have already booked, or they will ask you for your availability and between the family, the funeral director and me, we will come up with a day and a time that suits everybody. And um, so once we've done that, once I say yes, I can do that service, then the funeral director will then furnish me with a number of details about the, the, the family who need my services. And that will be things like the deceased's name, their age, their date of birth, where they died. They don't tell me how the person died. That's not information that the funeral directors will pass on if they know it. Um, that would be very much up to the family if they decided to share that information. And they don't always, you know, I've done many funerals where I have no idea how the person's died. That's absolutely fine. It's, you know, that's not, I, I don't need to know that information to deliver a good funeral service. So they will t give you the details of the next of kin and that's the person that i'll be in contact with so you get their name address and their telephone number you will then go over the details of the service again to make sure the date and the time and the place you you're both on you know on point with that and then any wee details that i need to know so things like if the family want to have a hymn or if there's going to be a piper or if there's any special requests that the funeral director think i need to thinks I need to know about he she will tell me those and I'll write them down so once I have all that information the first thing I do is I make contact with a family and so I'll phone that person that next of kin that I have and I'll just say something like you know good morning my name's Lindy Irving I'm the celebrant that's going to be taking the service for your dad and there's a pause and we then have a sort of telephone introductions and um, and I say I'm just wondering if there's any chance we can arrange a date and a time when I can come and sit down with you and the family and just talk about what you would like for the service for your dad. And um, and from there you arrange a date and a time. I try to make that as soon as possible after being, you know, after being given those details because it, well, the sooner you can visit the family, the sooner you can get it written and then you're organised well ahead of time. But also, you don't know what else, what else is going to come in, what else is going to um, happen in, the, in the, the, the following days. So I like to get in as soon as possible. So once I've organised a date and a time with the family, the first thing I do is go back and tell the funeral director. So I just, a wee text to her or him just saying... Just spoke with the family of the late John Doe, uh, arranged them to see them or tomorrow at 2pm. And that way the funeral director in his head or her head just ticks, that's done, Lindy's on top of it, don't need to worry. Um, the other reason that I contact the family as soon as possible after getting those details from the funeral director is because the funeral director is in t contact with the family all the time and if they give you those details and then they speak to them the next day and say how did you go on with Lindy and the family say oh she hasn't contacted us yet then they're left looking a wee bit mm. so you want to doof 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 get things done as soon as possible because that way you are not only is it much better for you in terms of organization but you're building up that trust with funeral directors that they know if they they 
um, give you one of their, their families that you're going to look after one of those families you're going to be contacting them straight away you're going to be arranging to meet them straight away and that, you know that whole process is going to be done um, in a timely fashion so then I go along on that day that I've arranged to meet the family and um, and also when I'm talking to them I always, I always say is there anything you would like to ask me at this stage now usually it's not they don't or they'll say is there anything we should be thinking about so I would say you can think about things like music choices there are usually three pieces of music and um, so if you could have a think about what, what music you would like to have played or he or she would have liked to have played then that would be helpful if you can jot down any stories any memories if you're talking to any members of the family and they say oh I remember when we did this then jot it down and I can put that information together so we'll do that I will then go along to see the family on the day sorry I'm just checking the time and um, that's fine and I will spend usually between an hour and a half and two hours with the family I know there are celebrants out there that spend four and five hours with the family I that doesn't work for me for a number number of reasons a it's a long, long time for the family to have to sit and uh, go through that process. It's a long, long time for me as a celebrant. You know, your brain, we all know the psychology of the brain, or at least some of the psychology of the brain, and the fact is it, cognitive overload is a, is a huge issue, and it's, a, and it's a problem when you're a celebrant because you have to be able to sift through all the information that's coming at you to get the stuff that's relevant and so to me an hour and a half to two hours is plenty of time to get the information that you need and the third reason is and this might seem quite um, cold but it's no meant to be but I don't get paid enough to sit with a family for five hours celebrants fees for the work that they put in um, are actually really really great value for money and um, and so I, I can't afford to sit with a family for five hours and as I say I don't think you need to so an hour and a half to two hours I will sit with the family I am quite good at keeping people on point and, and if people go off track and start talking about things that are not relevant to what we're doing bringing them gently back to to what we need to be talking about and so during that meeting um, I start off I always start off saying something along the lines of I'm really sorry that you're having to go through this in the first place because it's true that I'm always really sorry that people have to meet with me um, but that my part is to help them to say the best goodbye that they can and I always do my very very best to do that for families and um, and then I tell them that I'll go through that I'm there to collect all the information I need to allow me to write the service and that I do that in three different steps. So first of all, I go through all the details that I already have that the funeral director gave me, just to make sure that I got them all right, that I've noted them down correctly. Then we talk about the service itself and things like if anybody else is going to be speaking, music choices, readings that they might have, poems, all the sort of logistics of the service. I also offer to talk them through what will happen at the service and I, and I well, I offer that, they don't have to, I can say if you don't want me to do that or don't, if they want me to do it I say I'll do it and if it's too much just put your hand up or tell me to stop and I'll stop. But most families like to know what's going to, what's going to happen, they like to know um, what's in front of them. So we, I talk them through that whole process and um, and then I say and then we're just going to talk about your dad's life and what you want me to say about him. So those first two I have uh, I have questions ready prepared for the family um, so I go through the details that the funeral director's given me just make sure they're all absolutely right then I have questions about things like um, the tone of the service do you want it to be a wee bit more uplifting or do you just want it to be more life centred but still very reverential you know so I take my lead from the family and what they say sometimes they say you know what it was a very private man we just want a simple respectful service I can do that or they go, he was a character and he would have wanted everybody laughing at his jokes. I can also do that. And um, so, yes, so all those wee things. I find out if anybody's going to be speaking, 
who they are, do they know what they're going to say, can I talk to that person because I need to time everything and so we have to work out between us how much time they're going to be allowed to get up and speak so that I can build that into the service. Things like hymns, if they're going to have any hymns and um, if they have any poems or readings that they know of that they want in the service, do they want me to read them, somebody else going to read them. So all the wee logistics of the service, music choices, we, we talk through those and we get the phone out and we get them on Spotify and we play them so that it's the right, the right versions. And then once I've got all that information, once I know on paper exactly what the family want in terms of uh, the practicalities of the service, then I just get a four or, sheet, four or five sheets of blank paper and I get a pen and I say, um, now let's talk about his life. And, um, and I just start at the very beginning. I say, do you think he or she had a happy childhood? And people go, oh yes. And I'll say, how do you know that? And so they'll either say, if their siblings are in the room, they'll say, because we were there. <laughs> and then you can say, right, so tell me about your brother, your sister, what, what was he or she like? If it's, a, if it's a, a son or a daughter and they weren't there, they'll say things like, oh, well, because she just always used to reminisce about the things she used to get up to. What were those things? What kind of things would she say? And then you just start building and whatever they say leads on to another question. You know, so if they say, oh, this time her and her pal were nicking apples from the trees. So was was she a, a mischievous wee girl, do you think? Was she a, a quiet and shy wee girl? And so you're just building and everything in the family saying you're writing down everything. And I write it in a way, I ask questions in a way that whatever I write down, when I go back home, their service almost writes itself. Um, so I spend, yeah, two hours doing that. Once I have all the information that I need, I then say that to the family. I, I will, I collect, at the end, I, I get any thank yous that the family want me to give and um, just anything else that they, they want me to know. Is it a dress code? You know, are they asking for flashes of colour or a bit of tartan or whatever, uh, or bright colours? And then we, I just allow an opportunity for any questions that the family might want to ask. And then that's it. I go away home and as soon as I possibly can, I start writing that service so that I am in the same um, headspace as I was when I was sitting talking to the family. So I can remember how they said things and facial expressions as they said them. And, and so I, I write that as soon as I possibly can. That takes a couple of hours. It used to take me four hours. I've got that down. It usually takes about, at the most, two and a half now because I'm just looking at what I'm writing and and, um, and I do that. Once I've written it, I then send it to the family. Uh, well, I spell check it. I don't go, go through and correct all my grammar and everything at that stage. I just spell check it and I send it to the family and I tell them in the email, look, don't worry about the grammar, don't worry about, because it's been written to be read in my voice read out loud in my voice it's not been written to be read by somebody in a bit of paper and and sometimes families miss that and they start um changing all the grammar and putting full stops in and that doesn't work because um that doesn't sound right when you're seeing it so um i send it to the family and um the they are asked to read through it twice, first to make sure I haven't made any wee errors and secondly to make sure it's the way they want to say goodbye. And then they just write a list of changes that they want, things taken out, things put, put in, um, any wee errors I might have made with names or dates or whatever it might be. They just send me a list of changes and um, when those changes come back, I make them, I send it back again. So it just goes to and fro until the family say, we are happy with that. That is the goodbye we want to give to her dad and then on the day I turn up at the, the crematorium or the, whatever you know graveside or hotel or whatever the service is getting held um, about half an hour to 45 minutes before the service starts and um, and that is the service that is delivered and so that is the process really um, it's it maybe sounds quite complicated it's not really 
there's a lot of time involved, time to meet families, time to write services, time to travel to and from um, the family visits and the crematorium and then time to actually be there and plenty of time and to deliver it. So I hope that's helpful for anybody that's wondering what is the process of a, a, a funeral for a celebrant. That's how it's done here with me. Uh, it might be different elsewhere, but that's how it's done here. And um, and I absolutely love it. So that's quarter past two. I'm going to get in and get myself set up for my service at half past two. And um, I hope to speak to you all very soon. Okay, bye.